Welcome to Data Structures in C++. Over the next few videos, we're going to talk about the stack data structure. So let's start by seeing how a stack works. Now, I like to think of a stack of containers. First, you can add containers to the stack by placing them on top of each other one by one. We call this pushing elements onto the stack. We start with an empty stack and push one element onto the stack. We continue to do this one element at a time, always adding to the top of the stack. You can remove containers from the stack, but you have to do it from the top, one container at a time. We call this popping elements off of the stack. So we start with the stack that has a few elements, and we pop the top element off of the stack. We can continue to do this one element at a time until the stack is empty. Lastly, you can also see what's in the topmost container without having to remove it from the stack. This is typically called peeking at the stack. Now, if you've done any research on stacks, you've probably seen this term, it's LIFO, and LIFO stands for last in, first out. This basically means that the last element that was pushed onto the stack must be the first element to be popped off of the stack. So with that, what are stacks actually used for? Well, most of the time uh, they're used to do one thing, and that is to remember the order in which certain things happened. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the memory stack, which is a good example. But an even better example of where stacks are used is in undo functions. And finally, there are also uh, a lot of parsing algorithms that use stacks as well. So now that we understand what a stack is and what they're used for, let's head over to Atom and define the public interface of our stack data structure. OK, so you'll notice that I have a few files here already, um, the Z exception file and this Z student file. The exception header is basically just, uh, it just defines a class that uh, represents an exception object that we will throw in exceptional situations. We also have this zstudent class, and this is just a test object for us. Um, we'll use this uh, in our unit test, and you'll see how we do that then. We also have these CMake files, and this one inside of the test directory is going to be the one that we modify when we want to build our actual uh, test programs. So let's start off by uh, adding a new header file. And this is going to be zstack.hpp. OK, and I'm going to get rid of the sidebar for some space. And we will paste in uh, kind of an outline for ourselves. So up at the top, we have our header guards. And that prevents uh, redefinition of this file. And we've also declared a, a namespace. Uh, namespacing helps prevent naming conflicts with other libraries or uh, classes and all that stuff in, in your programs. Down below, we have our actual class. And we have this template type name T thing going on up here uh, that's basically saying that this class is a template class. The T is the type of data that will be inside the class. So this might be an integer, or a double, or another object, whatever. Um, but it's basically kind of like a placeholder, if you will. So uh, here's our public section. This is our public interface. Um, we've got a, a constructor and a destructor. We have our push and our pop functions. We also have, this is a, I've renamed the peak function to top, because uh, it reads a little better in the code. And then we have uh, these three extra functions. So erase will erase the stack. Um, is empty, we'll see whether or not the stack is empty, and size will tell us how many um, elements we have uh, on the stack. So let's start by uh, defining our constructor. So we'll say z stack and give it an empty implementation. For destructor, uh, I'm going to uh, say that this is virtual. Um, basically, this will, uh, this will tell subclasses of Z stack that they have to implement this. Okay, so um, this is Z stack with a little tilde in front, uh, again with an empty implementation for now. And then our push function. So our push function isn't going to return anything. Uh, I'll say push, but it does take an argument. And the argument is going to be, uh, it's going to have the type uh, of T, right? Because it's going to be a type of that. And we're going to pass in a reference to it. Uh, we're also going to say that it's const. So that way, this function, this push function, can't modify 
the data that we're trying to push in. We just want to push the data uh, into the stack. So we're going to say const t reference, and we're going to give it a name of a data. The a is for argument, and we'll have an empty, uh, empty implementation. So for pop, now pop is going to actually return whatever the type is, right? So t, so maybe it's an integer, whatever, and pop. And uh, there's that, it takes no arguments. And for this to compile right now, let's just return uh, a new T object, okay? It's not really new, but you know what I mean. We'll do the same thing for top. And then we'll do this, say return T. Okay, just for now, just a, just a temporary code so this compiles. Erase uh, isn't going to return anything. Erase, um, so that'll just erase the stack. We don't need an implementation for now. Is empty will return a boolean. Uh, is empty, uh, and the boolean tells whether or not return. Uh, we'll say true for now. Uh, tells whether or not the stack is empty, and then int will be the type that we pass or we return from size. And for right now, the size is zero. Okay, so we have just defined our public interface. Um, it's empty for the moment. Uh, we're actually going to write our tests first and see them all fail. And then we're going to actually implement uh, the stack and see our tests begin to pass. That's called test-driven development, basically. Um, so hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And in the next video, we're going to actually write all of our unit tests. So thanks for watching.